Hey everyone, it's Norm from Tested here at Maker Fair 2024, and I've just met Ellie. Ellie, so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Yeah, you know, I've been following your journey with Coco Press for the past couple of years. It's a 3D printer that prints chocolate. It is. It is. And you're here showing off the next iteration, a prototype yes. of your version two. Yes. Uh, we haven't even seen the version one yet. So I'd love to know from the from the ground up. From the ground up. Yes. Long story short, I've been working on 3D chocolate printing for 10 years as of last month. Started as a school project, and um, after Maker Fair 2017, it's like, oh, maybe I can do this commercially. So I've been doing it full time now for five years. Um, after it became my senior design project in college, etc. Um, a year ago, I started shipping the first version of the printer, and like you said, well, this is the prototype of the new one. Oh my gosh! Okay, that's the shortest I can tell the story. Great. <laughs> Fundamentally, because uh, we've worked with FEM printers for a long time, is an extrusion machine. So I assume your XYZ is basically like an FDM printer. Yes, yeah, right? yeah. What's, what's different in terms of using chocolate versus filament? The main thing is temperature control. Mm. So this is the uh, filament that goes into the machine. It's a 60 gram uh, core, mm -hmm. uh, cocoa cores. They go into the stainless steel cartridge and are heated. There's two separate heating zones. So we're at, you know, plus or minus a tenth of a degree Celsius. We have really precise temperature control. Now. And all of the chocolate for your print is heated at one time. It's not heated as it's going in. Not right at the nozzle. Yeah, exactly. Like a uh, standard printer. Um, because the then, flow, right? The flow is the most important part. Yeah, yeah. You need to make sure it's at the right state. It's we're heating it to just below body temperature. Oh. So barely enough to make it flow. It's like a gel-like consistency. Mm. And then we push on it with about 10 pounds of force. And then it cools in just ambient temperature. We have no active cooling or anything. Um, we're able to just print right onto our silicone baking mat and uh, it goes from there. So you don't really have to worry about like adhesion issues. No, right? no. We have we have a lot less adhesion issues than a plastic printer. The chocolate is pretty forgiving in that way. Yeah, it's really surprising to me that you don't need any active cooling, yeah. right? Just at a room temperature, because I know even with filament printers, when you're printing fast, Definitely. one thing you want to and do you is- you know, you're printing at what? 220 Celsius with right. that. Where this, we're printing at 33 Celsius. Right. Uh, so what is that, like 91 Fahrenheit? Okay, so just a little bit above, you know, it's a warm temperature. Yeah. It's like holding a piece of chocolate it in is, your hand. It is. And it's melting as, as you know, exactly. can end it down. Yeah. But importantly, you said then you're heating the entire core at once. Yes. Right. So we heat the whole core at once. Mm. And um, then you can have different chocolate types that you just on the screen say, I'm printing with milk, white, dark. Yeah. And it uses all the same G code, standard, you know, STLs. Prusa Slicer, watch you built into Prusa Slicer now, which is wow. really cool. Awesome. I always like to say we're like right above Creality alphabetically. <laughs> if you just go and add a new nice. printer. Yeah. Um, and and takes, you know, any standard 3D printing stuff. And the difference between the different chocolate types and cores, is it the melting point? Is yeah, it the viscosity? Like temperature. temperature. And, and viscosity, but mm. uh, the motor is pretty forgiving in just giving it the current it needs to, to push it, you know, at that amount. Tell me about the experimentation that you had to go through to figure out the right flow, you know, the right layer height, for example, for these models to get structures that look like real benches yeah. that are 3D prints. Absolutely. A lot of trial and error is the answer. Um, it has been a lot of the material science of the chocolate, just like mm. learning what works well. I, I'm not a chocolatier by trade, so I've kind of learned the chocolate side from the ground up. Um, what we found is we're now using a compound chocolate, which means it uses a palm oil base and still has cocoa solids for the flavor. Mm -hmm. And that seems to work really well at, like you were saying, you know, solidifying at room temperature yeah. with no active cooling. I don't know what temperature it is out here, but it's, I don't know, 75 or something? Yep. Yep. Warm, too warm for me to be wearing a sweater. <laughs> um, and so it's pretty cool that we're able to print and, you know, even get something as tall as this Eiffel Tower, you know, oh, at, at a show like this. Are there certain geometries that you recommend? Like, you know, are you, you're, I guess, are you not doing supports for this? You want I things? Done some supports, oh. and all you do, you just dip a knife into hot water, make sure that, you know, wipe it off in the paper towels. So there's no water mm -hmm. on the knife. Just cut the support right yeah. away. Okay, so um, you do big overhangs, complex shapes. Big overhangs are a little bit harder. You know, you can see with the bench sheet yeah. that we can definitely do the overhangs, especially right here, mm. but it, 
is a little bit rough yeah, sometimes. Yeah. So depending on your room temperature, if, you, you know, if you're putting in closer to 70 degree temperature, maybe you can get away with a little more overhangs, but generally, you know, it's, it's fine. Well, when you're doing textures and stuff, the room temperature doesn't matter very much. What are some of the fun things or interesting things that, or surprising things that people who are using the Coco Press have been making with your printers? One thing I love is when people combine it with traditional chocolate making as well. So uh, we sold a printer to a chocolate shop uh, around LA and they did edible airbrush. And so they're combining, you know, the new technology with classic chocolate making right. and ways of decorating chocolate, right. which I find just really cool. It makes a lot of sense. Like when we think of these 3D printers, whether it's for plastic or, or edible materials, yeah. they're not, they're powerful tools, but Absolutely. they should complement the traditional practices Absolutely. and that mixed material, mixed media, yeah. even for edible media, makes a lot of sense. And I guess I should say the main two reasons to 3D print chocolate, besides the fact that it's really cool um, and that there are no failed prints, only pre-success snacks. <laughs> um, That's true. The main yeah. two reasons are customization yeah. without needing a custom mold. You know, that's similar to injection molding to 3D printing generally, but custom molds in chocolate shops are, are difficult. They take right. a long time. Um, and then the other reason is you can make intricate textures that are not possible to make with traditional chocolate making yeah. techniques. So like the gyroid infill that's yeah. in any standard slicer, you can make this. Right. There's overlapping shapes, there's thin walls. Yeah. It's just not possible. Right. So starting to like combine those two things of different textures and customization is really cool and, and a cool way to kind of complement, you know, traditional chocolate making with, you know, 3D printing. You got lattice work, the infill is so infill, you could fill it with other other Absolutely. edible material. Like Absolutely. that becomes an actual yeah. Part of the eating experience. Definitely. Oh, super neat. Uh, can we try Absolutely. one of these? These are the samples that you've had. I'm going to eat one as well. So. Okay. All right. So this is just your standard chocolate? Yes, this, this is our standard milk chocolate. Mm. All right. Yep. Yeah. My kids would go nuts over these. Yeah. Some people think that the printing process is going to change the flavor, mm -hmm. but it doesn't. As you can probably mm -hmm. tell, it's just standard good milk chocolate. Mm. And then with version two, what are the upgrades that you're putting in? What are the things that you've taken and learned from the first version? Uh, I just ate chocolate, sorry. Um, a few different things. One, we now run Clipper. And mm. so that allows us to do some really cool stuff with the user interface. Um, there's a lot of hobbyists buying the printer and chocolate shops, bakeries, and also school maker spaces. And you know, two of those three groups it might be their first experience with 3D printing. So we want to make it really easy to use. Yeah. So I'm super proud of this new user interface that just lets you uh, really see what you're printing, what you're doing. Sorry for leaning over and talking, but it really shows you and just makes it easier to you know, approach 3D printing. Mm -hmm. It could be a scary thing. Yeah. Um, and we're trying to say it's actually not difficult. Anyone can learn how to do it. Um, so that's one of the big things, our press print UI. And then the other really cool thing is that we now have a swappable extruder. Mm. So if I can come over yeah, here and absolutely. grab this one, um, this is going to be our external uh, heater. But with just one button, we can now take off the entire extruder mm. and swap it in to do either bigger prints or even multicolor stuff so that you can, you can do like a manual filament swap, oh. have dark chocolate in the machine, white chocolate, oh. you know, externally heated. Yeah. And so I'm really excited about just that ability too. Do you want to hot swap the nozzles? Are you doing like nozzle size changes as well? You no, a we have a 0.8 millimeter nozzle okay. and a 1.6 millimeter nozzle. Yeah. Everything's compatible with Coco Press 1 and 2. Um, it really is just being able to swap the entire extruder, which also makes it easier to clean um, and, and things like that. Fantastic. You're benefiting from all the advances on the software oh, yeah. side. Oh, yeah. The repository of wonderful like print and place models. Absolutely. Base mode, Absolutely. all that stuff. It's, Arachne. You know, I've been working, at, yes. I've been working on this for about 10 years. And when I started, even just auto bed leveling was barely <laughs> a thing in a lot right. of printers. You know, you're using the springs and manual bed levels. And now, you know, we can just throw an inductive probe on there and it's just enable something in Marlin or Clipper. Um, and you have it. So I, I, 
I love how much 3D printing has changed over the years and how much we've benefited from it. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Congratulations on the development of this. And what is the launch timeline for the version 2? So we'll be shipping these this winter, but pre-orders are open now. It's $1,500 or $1,499 generally for the printer, but we have $300 off at $1,199 for pre-orders. And uh, we're hoping to get these out there. There'll be pre-orders are open in the U.S. and Canada, and we'll be coming to Europe pretty soon. Right. Awesome. Ellie, congratulations on that. Oh, yes. And sorry, the last thing I just wanted to mention was we're also going to have upgraded kits for anyone who bought the first printer. They'll be priced almost at cost because we just we think that this is really the future of where we're headed. And we want people to get all of the tech of the new machines. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us your story, sharing some chocolate as well. Thank you. Pleasure to meet you. You as well. Thank you guys so much for watching that video. I would be remiss if I didn't tell you we have some excellent merch. We have a five pack of demerit badges for sale right now at tested slash store.com. We've got the I hung it off of level demerit badge, the I built the chair backwards demerit badge, the I hit my thumb with a hammer demerit badge. We've got the stapler in my finger demerit badge and my favorite, I stuck the duct tape to itself demerit badge. Get yours now, tested slash store dot store dash store, tested dash store. Tested. It's right here there, just click that. <laughs>